your agenda. It said motivational speaker. You're salespeople. You walked in here, sat down, crossed your arms, and went, go ahead, motivate me. <laughs> Finally, you see that speed trap cross the first beat, cross the second beat, that's a cool part, stand up, boom, blast the bear in the chest, slow down, slow down, slow down, and then it hits you that adrenaline rush, that, wow, I wanna do that again. <laughs> We're interrupted, the national average, let's say six minutes into a task, and to get back on task, if we get back on task at all, is between 23 and 30 minutes. If we get back on task at all. More research coupled in. 80% of interruptions are of little or no value. 80%. If you factor that over the course of a year, you, in your life, in the last 12 months, spent 744 hours of interrupted time of little or no value. If you multiply that by this room, that's 891,500 hours of interrupted time of little or no value. And who's responsible for turning that around? Who are you talking to right now? Well, a guy that went from recreational skier to the gold medal round in the Olympic Games in just four years. Our first competitor, the Canadian Vince Pacetti of Calgary, and uh, he's had quite a week here, Curry. From my Olympic experience of reaching those games and half the time other Olympians would take to get there, went on to become a New York Times best-selling author, number one Wall Street Journal, number one USA Today, seven books under my belt, you know, over a thousand speeches worldwide, helping individuals overcome obstacles, maintain resiliency, and thrive in a competitive landscape in the business of life. And then, for the last 10 years, I've been ascending mountains in the Himalayas, going on expeditions. A friend put it to me this way. He said, Vince, you spent the first half of your life going downhill. Now you're going up. So why don't we go up together? Listen, I'm not just a mountain climber, nor am I just an Olympian or a New York Times best-selling author. I'm a guy that facilitates extraordinary experiences for your attendees for that all-important meeting as they're sitting in that conference room chair. Your team will be able to reach their goals in half the time it normally takes. They'll be able to reach those goals with more ease and have more fun along the way. The way I do that, whether your people are in sales, whether they're leaders, or their teams seeking to be stronger, I challenge them to fear less be more selfless, compassionate, humble, and especially persistent. To reach our goals in half the time, remember this, we're not gonna do this alone. You know that saying, the rising tide raises all boats. We can elevate those around us by being fearless, but I put fearless in the context of fearing less. When we fear less, we open doors of excellence for those in our sphere of influence. What will we do different after this conference? We want different results. So in order to have different results, it certainly makes sense that what could we do? How could we compete differently? How could we engage differently? How can we be, able to be a better leader? Lead differently. How do we compete? Well, this is your job. Because typically, we want to do what the competition's not doing. I do this for a living. So 60 times this year, I'm going to go to an association, a business, a corporation, an annual sales event or whatever, and they all compete the same way. They, they talk about who our competition is and we want to do what the competition is not doing. And at this very moment, the competition is trying to do what you're not doing. But our job is to think of our competition as a person who does what we do. Meaning, if you are an owner, if you are an AR, if you're a coach, if you're a studio manager, Think of the best studio manager out there. And instead of trying to do what they're not doing, think of it this way. Do what the competition is not willing to do. So your competition isn't local, it isn't national, it isn't even international. It's the top 16 or 15 guys in the world. And if you change your mind about who your competition is and do what that person's not willing to do, you end up with innovative solutions that can cascade through this entire organization. Your job is to do what the competition is not willing to do. What are they not willing to do? Typically, 
those are the things you're not willing to do either. I'm not here to make you feel good the whole time, <laughs> right? I'm here to make you feel uncomfortable. I want you to look in the stealth honesty mirror and say, what am I not willing to do? The second way to reach our goals in half the time is being selfless. Selflessness is a leadership quality that is infectious. People want to be a part of that. We bring our teams together. Our inner circle tightens as we are more selfless and serving others. When we are selfish, we're focused on where we're at. When we raise our focus to where we want to go, that's the people we serve. And when we are selfless, we serve those and they rally around us at the exact same time. And so the first guy gets on there and he's looking at the rope, looking at the thing, looking back, he says, stop. Just look at the point on the wall where you want to end up. The rope will always be underneath you. Your feet are always going to be at the end of your legs. Just <laughs> focus on the point. Within 10 minutes, 22 athletes went from unable to walk even five feet on the rope to walking the length of the rope, turning around and coming back just by changing the focus. Thank you. And I want us to dissect the word compassion because right in the center of that word of compassionate is passion. And your level of passion will determine how compassionate you can be in this industry. When leaders are compassionate, they send this clear message. I care about you. When salespeople are compassionate, the clear message is, I'm listening to you. Went up to Grand Prairie. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so excited. And back in the day when three-piece suits were the deal, I had a three-piece suit with a tie, a sharp, crisp white shirt, and got in front of my demographic, <laughs> which wasn't what I was expecting. Forgot to wear flannel. <laughs> and we learn the easy way or the hard way, don't we? <laughs> Standing in front of this group talking about international investment properties, and there's this moment when time freezes, isn't there? There's this moment when it just goes, <laughs> and this guy stands up. And I remember, you remember his finger? His finger was the shape of one of those sausages that we just had for breakfast. <laughs> And it was about the same color, a little more wrinkly, and he was just shaking his sausage finger, and he was shaking it. He says, you, you people, you people come from the city, and all you want to do is rip us off. <laughs> all the heads go from sausage finger to the speaker. <laughs> and there's this silence. What are you going to do? You say this. You sound skeptical. <laughs> it, <laughs> you can't make this up, man. The whole room burst out laughing, and I said, oh, I'm serious. I mean, you've got to be skeptical. If you've got questions and I'm not answering them, then I'm doing the wrong thing. And this, this light bulb came off, and take off the jacket, take off the vest that was under that, unloose it in the tie, and then just start talking about the material. And so at these moments, yes, we do get lessons in these opportunities, but they will be uncomfortable in this business, but you have to step through that door. The fourth way to reach your goals in half the time is not what most people expect. It's to be humble. Well, let's think about this for a second. When we drive towards a goal, we isolate ourselves and make it happen. But when we set ego aside and become more humble, we attract winners. We actually encourage relationships. We facilitate better communication and we empower innovation. That is a powerful way to create better teams and better results and reach your goals in half the time. And there's really a choice. You can make this choice. You can either be humble, be humble, or you will be humbled. <laughs> and to be able to step into our world today, man, it's, it's this balancing act of confidence and, and moving forward and courage and being able to let go and I'm not saying it's easy. But to just be humble. The way to maintain that balancing act and take ego out of the equation is very simple. Have fun. Here's an example. 
If you do not leave within the 60 second window, window, Victoria will stand out in front of you and go, you're disqualified out of the way. <laughs> Pick the line, that's right, I'm a bullet. That's right, I'm a bullet. And then have what? Fun. Fun. Looked at Victoria, the French starter, give the nod and she says, Victoria, you gotta make love to your words, okay? You gotta go, ready, go. I mean, I want Flem to hit the back of Dave's head right here. <laughs> Look at Victoria, give the nod, and she says, ready, go. <laughs> Sounded like an angry Bulgarian, but we'll go with it, okay? <laughs> Just about to leave, and a guy right about where the podium is starts screaming at another guy. The guy screaming, his nickname is Pig. And nobody could believe Pig was doing this. You just don't do this in a start area. It, it, it'd be like going to the PGA, let's say Bubba, who's just about to tee off, and you go up behind him and go, hey, like this. <laughs> I could not believe Pig was doing that. I got rid of Pig, thought, okay, that's right. Get rid of Pig, that's right. I'm, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet, have fun, have fun, have fun, have fun, I'm a bullet, forget about pig, forget about pig, forget about pig. Looked at the starter, give a nod, and got the blankest look. Look back at the starter, give another nod, still a blank look. So when in France, do as the French do, I went, well. <laughs> and the starter gave a look back, much like what 13-year-old girls have perfected. You know the look, this one? Then held up the stopwatch and went, I said to go. <laughs> you don't know how much of the 60 seconds you've eaten up. So you picked up the ski, slapped on the tech before you know what's going on, talking out loud to yourself. Vince, get focus. That's right, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet, I'm a pig, I'm a pig. <laughs> then I started to think, well, you are wearing a pink suit. <laughs> and you know how you make yourself laugh? I'm going, the pig on skis. <laughs> and started to laugh. This, ah, ah, ah. If you ever go to a speed skiing race, you hear a sound. And he's unnerving, this human body going by this. And if you listen carefully, you hear this. Help! This is what they heard. First beam, second beam. And then remembered where I was. Got to the finish area, looked up on the speed board, and it didn't say 126 miles per hour. It said 130.1 miles per hour. Yeah. What? It was flashing new national record. Friends in the media running over. I'm thinking, I was a pig. <laughs> How does that work? Had what? Fun. The fifth way to reach your goals in half the time is to be persistent. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Teams in motion build momentum. Lead by example, take action, stay curious. Your persistence is infectious, but there is one thing that will stand in your way. And the fascinating thing about our world today is that we're in a world based on instant what? Instant gratification. In a world of instant gratification, if we don't see results when? We get frustrated. Think of an initiative right now. Think of a customer you're working on. Think of a scenario that you're in right now that's a rollout that you're struggling with, that you know will take time. Consciously, you know this will be delayed gratification. Yet, what is our expectation at a subconscious level as we speak? Instant gratification. Four billion neurons expect it when? Now. And we're in this state of Frustration and disconnect, and this isn't working, road rage, whatever happens out there. That alignment makes it easier and faster. We're on this journey together, this Olympic journey, and there's impact that you have. And to wrap this up, I'd like you to actually get this emotional buzz of the impact you're having, not just on patients, but their families, on the communities. Please join me in standing and face this direction. Let's try that again. On the count of three, you ready to commit? <laughs> One, two, three, commit. Point your skis downhill, get into a tuck. Right there, no, this way. <laughs> you gotta face downhill. 
All right, you're picking up speed, 60 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 125 miles an hour. And as you're rocketing down this mountain, you're holding, maintaining that tuck. And as you look at that point, your first beam, second beam, boom, the mountain you set out to conquer is now behind you. You look over and see how well you did. But most importantly, you see your family waiting for you. And when you've done that hero's climb, that Olympic journey, you can't help but feel, I want to do that again.